Good morning. I'd like to call the order of the Public Improvement Commission hearing of January 31st, 2019. Our first item is the hearing minutes. Upon request by the Public Improvement Commission staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on January 17th, 2019. Any questions, comments, corrections, or edits on the minutes? All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the January 17, 2019 meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yes, so moved. Moving on to the public hearing section. The first public hearing item is on a petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Hyde Park, consisting of curb and median alignment, uh, median island realignment, roadway, sidewalk, and driveway curb cut reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, street lights, street furniture, and traffic signal infrastructure. The locations are Wolcott Square, generally between Hyde Park Avenue and Prescott Street. Wolcott uh, Street, generally Wolcott Square. Wolcott Court, generally Wolcott Square. Hyde Park Avenue, generally north of Milton Street. This was new business on January 17th, 2017. And this as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair <laughs> Plan, Hyde Park Avenue and Milton Street, Wolcott Square, Wolcott Court, Hyde Park Avenue, Reedville, Hyde Park, two sheets, day January 25th, 2019. Bill? Good morning. Uh, my name is Bill Conroy. I'm a pro uh, senior transportation planner at the Boston Transportation Department. Uh, with me today is um, Zach Wasmuth. Uh, from Public Works Department and Rick Lantini, who's the uh, consultant from Hollingstein Hudson. Uh, we're here to discuss the project, uh, rebuild project, which has to do with the signalization of uh, the Father Hot Bridge, as I related to. Uh, that's Milton, Ave, Milton Ave at uh, Naponta Valley Parkway, as well as High Park Ave at uh, the bridge, as well as Walcott Square. Um, as far as this project's concerned, uh, a lot of this property is actually owned by DCR. Once again, uh, the mayor has gone ahead and uh, the city of Boston has gone ahead to uh, secure funding for this project for safety reasons for both vehicular as well as pedestrians. Uh, and we think this is a great project. Uh, so I'm going to turn with that. I'm going to turn it over to Zach. Uh, Zach's going to walk through kind of the scheduling of it where we stand right now. And then Rick can give us an overview of the project. Hi, hey, uh, Zach Wasn't with Public Works. Um, yeah, Bill gave a great introduction there. That's the general scope of the project. We're planning to advertise this project uh, next month in February and to, uh, to start construction hopefully in the spring through the summer of, of this year um, to meet our uh, obligations and everything. And I'll hand it over to Rick to kind of uh, go over the details of the project. Well, Rick Latini with Howard Stein Hudson. I'm going to mention this is uh, improvements around the Greenville train station in Hyde Park. Uh, we're adding new signals on either the, the, of the bridge on Milton Street. We're also optimizing the traffic signal that exists today in Walcott Square, and they'll all be interconnected so they can communicate with each other. Uh, we're also re uh, doing, re uh, reconstructing the sidewalks and improving accessibility, as well as providing a pavement mill and overlay even within the DCR home portion of Hyde Park Ave. Yeah. At the intersection of uh, Hyde Park Avenue, Milton Street, we are actually um, widening the sidewalk at this intersection here. The city owns this portion of Hyde Park, yeah, by the way, and this is DCR, and then Mass DOT owns the bridge. So we are widening this by changing the radius here from 75 to 50 feet. Uh, we are rebuilding what is existing asphalt sidewalk, we're rebuilding that. We're also taking the bus shelter here and bringing it to the far side of the intersection. And part of that improvement is widening this sidewalk from six and a half feet to nine feet. Uh, is there any question of the intersection before we go to Walcott Square? Now, Walcott Square, I guess, before we're improving the signals that are there, uh, we're adding these crosswalks in ramps which don't exist today. We're also, there's a, a narrow island here that has no curb ramps, so someone in a wheelchair would actually have to go behind the island to get across here. So we're widening that to a triangular island, adding appropriate ramps. And also with the restriping of the island, it helps kind of direct the traffic because there's a right turn lane and some through lanes. Uh, we're also taking a bus shelter, which is right here, it's away in the way of the signal. We're bringing it into Walcott Square. This is a one-way traffic here. And with this, we're also widening this sidewalk similar to the last intersection. So we'll add, I think, from, uh, I think it's from 9 feet to 16 feet. Uh, I think those are the only improvements. We're also, actually, we're actually moving this crosswalk, too, because uh, the existing crosswalk ends in the driveway to a gas station right now. So uh, that, that's it for this um, intersection. 
Any questions on the intersection? Rick, is there a quick question on the street furniture? Are we putting in benches in the... Um, no, I just we, yeah, we're just we're relocating the uh, existing bus shelters. Yeah, so, yeah, there was a detail on yeah. the previous set. Yeah. yeah. Any questions or comments? No. Give me your time. Okay. Members of the public. All right. All motions. I will make a motion to approve a petition by the City of Boston Transportation Department for specific repairs within Walcott Square, Walcott Street, Walcott Court, and Hyde Park Avenue, as read into the record by the Chair. And a show on a set of plans entitled the City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Hyde Park Avenue, Milton Street, Walcott Square, Walcott Court, Hyde Park Avenue, Reedville, Hyde Park, two sheets dated January 25th, 2019. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Second item of the public hearing is on a joint petition by Trinity Stewart LLC and the Boston Planning and Development Agency for the vertical discontinuance of portions of the following public ways in Boston proper, vertically above the grades of the sidewalks, locations of Trinity Place on its easterly side at address number 40 south of Stewart Street, and Stewart Street on its southerly side east of Trinity Place. This was new business on January 17th, 2019, and this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Discontinuance plan, vertical, Trinity Place and Stewart Street, Boston proper, one sheet in January 24th, 2019. Uh, good morning, thank you. Uh, I'm Joe Sheridan uh, from Goulson and Stores, and I'm here with uh, Rick Latini from Howard Stein Hudson um, on behalf of Trinity Stewart LLC. We're here to discuss uh, specific repairs and uh, discontinuances for the 40 Trinity Place project um, located at the corner of Trinity and Stewart Street in uh, the Back Bay. Um, and I think with that, I'll turn it over to Rick to discuss the um, site a little bit more. Good morning, Rick Latini with Howard Stein Hudson. Uh, this is the uh, southeasterly corner of Trinity Place and Stewart Street across the Hancock Tower. Um, we're building a 33 story hotel and residence here. Uh, last time we were here, the only thing we, I think we asked for was a perspective on the canopies. Uh, the building has several fins and canopies at top, but they do have aesthetic value. They're mostly there because of, uh, to, uh, for wind mitigation, not only from our own building, but from the wind that comes off the Hancock Tower itself. So the fins we have one here that that, uh, that ends at the top of the canopy, so that's about has about 20 feet of clear. And that is in the public way today. It was up by about two feet. This one extends all the way down to the ground floor, as you can see. That one extends into the public way by about two foot nine inches. But you'll see in our next petition, we're actually widening the sidewalk in almost 16 feet. And lastly, we have this discontinuance this discontinu for the canopy, which extends over the sidewalk, beyond the sidewalk today. So when we extend it, it'll be within the sidewalk by like a foot and a half or two feet. Um, it has a minimum of 13 and a half feet of clearance. So that's actually for the lower canopy. This one here that sticks further out is even higher up than that. These are all internally made back to the building plumbing, as you can imagine. The <coughs> and uh, also, uh, the petition is a competition with the BPA includes this portion of our Trinity Place canopy, which is owned by the city and fee. This one's the next, the next one up. This one's owned by easement. So, any questions with the candidates? Uh, no, but uh, so this is a joint portion with the BPDA? That's oh, right, Boston Plain Development Agency. Yes. It's, I, so they are, they are the competition. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, representative. Uh, well, I'm sorry, there. I apologize. Sorry. No? Great. Well, again, at the last meeting, it was brought up because of the overhang not being compliance with the we basically widened the sidewalk and created a discontinuity within the roadway. That's why that, that occurred? Uh, no, actually, I think it's part of a master plan anyhow for this car. Uh, I think, um, I'm not sure if this plan is this, uh, probably not very clear from you guys are sitting, but, but uh, you know, there's actually a, a right turn lane here now that would line up with a bump out. This through lane actually goes all the way to the side plan on the ground for you guys to see that. So it actually kind of follows the existing pattern out there today. Uh, we have, we do a side tap, and we are in the process of uh, having the traffic signal plan under review. We've talked to John the Benedict this is not here. Still waiting for the comments from me to at this point. And again, I, I brought up the fact that, you know, during major events that we have in the back bay, this is the relief corridor where when we close, have the Boston Marathon, we have the carnival, we have all the different parades. This is the street. And now we're basically narrowing it, which is a concern for the department. And I'm I just trying to put my head around this because 
the only reason I see that getting narrowed is because of this canopy. Thank you. Guy Busso with Howard Stein Hudson. So the, um, I mean, there, there are, the roadway is, is fairly wide across this section, especially as it heads towards Dartmouth Street. As far as the coffee place improvements, which are um, on hold at the moment, we were re redoing that whole intersection. We worked with BTD on that. We ended up with certain um, throughput lanes at that location. As we were doing that plan, we also looked at this side of um, Trinity and uh, Stewart Street, as well as further down Stewart Street. So we have looked at this in a comprehensive manner through the Transportation Department and that uh, the uh, Transportation Access Plan Agreement, which was um, uh, approved, I think, in December 2017, it was executed, was fully reviewed by the uh, BTD planning and BTD engineering, and it had this configuration in it. That's nice. But the simple fact right. is, is that it being narrow because of the canopy, not because of a transportation uh, issue. I'm, I, I think, by narrowing the roadway, we were allowed to extend the canopy. I don't think we were needing to, we, we didn't need to extend the roadway to get the canopy. Uh, I think extending, the, uh, uh, reducing the roadway width and increasing the sidewalk width allowed us to increase the canopy. It was, it didn't, it didn't follow the, it didn't follow, the canopy wasn't the reason for the roadway. I thought it was because of the wind mitigation. That, that's the size that you needed. Well, my understanding is we could have accomplished it in a, uh, I'm, I'm not, Gary would know. Yeah, uh, Gary Kane with the architectural team. Um, Guy is correct. The design of the canopy did follow the, the street work. As a matter of fact, a lot of the street work was done prior to, uh, prior to the process when we were designing the building. Um, the, the roadways, the bulbing out of the corners was also done for, um, uh, for crossing but patterns. For but reducing, reducing pedestrian patterns. And, in part of that process, we were also looking at the wind mitigation and doing the wind, uh, the wind tunnel test. So it didn't, it wasn't done just as a knee-jerk reaction because of needing to, uh, needing to hide it. They just sort of happened, sort of organically with the, which, uh, which was following the, the traffic work. But that was the, that was the, the genesis of it, the design. Okay, thank you. Guy, do you know if it was all taken curb to curb with would be from the? Work right now. At the bump out, right. yeah. that's about so right. Post bump out, we'd still need 40 feet between. After widening the sidewalk to the new curbstone, your offset to the canopy is, did you say still only about a foot and a half? Correct. Uh, it shouldn't extend more than two thirds. Two -thirds. Of the okay. Property. So, because of the new testimony which your architect submitted, where the canopy was extended to support the sidewalk. So you need to sort of work backwards and adjust the plans. Yeah, so, so that if the new mitigation could take any shape or form, then it shouldn't extend past two-thirds of the width of the sidewalk. That's usually when you have clearance issues too, but I mean, once again, that could be a city. I'm, I'm talking building code as opposed to city too. I'm the two-thirds of the city that, that our city that okay. Some in those circumstances do we want vertical structures that is offset a foot and a half from the edge store. There are anything which we need that space, it is problematic to us. So please seek the guidance that is being given to you. Is that a, I, mean, I guess I'm asking, is that a city standard? Because uh, building code is usually related to the clearance underneath. If you have like 10 feet clearance underneath, then you have to have that two it's thirds. It's always been the PIC standard. Okay. Yes, yeah, the sidewalk and 10 feet. Building above. codes, you know where the building code stops, right? At the building line. Okay, so when you discontinue this area, follow the PIC guidelines. Other 
comes as it comes through. There's multiple uh, sort of actions here that you guys are seeing. Other questions or comments on this particular work for this one? Uh, assuming that the canopy is revised to meet PIC standards. Um, okay. Do we want to continue or do we want to vote on the contingencies? Uh, assuming that it's contingent on the canopy itself, is it within the specific repair or is it within the vertical discontinuance? Well, so the, it, the problem is, is that this is going to be a vertical discontinuance that is then going to change the square footage and what the BPDA is taking. So I think that I, I mean, like. The BPDA is going to have to take this, and if we're not sure what size or shape it's going to be, I don't know that that's the right point to be doing the BPDA taking. Right. So we can just continue until we actually yeah. have them. Chief, just, just so that trick is still attaining, just for your sake and for the audience's sake, within that foot and a half, if the city decides to put any vertical structure for whatever it is purpose, it's going to restrict. And there's not much which we can do within foot and a half. A mast arm, a tree, anything and... from here through eternity. Or if we wanted to pull that bump out fast, we would be okay. So that's it. Just a question again, yes. sir. Gary Kane from the architecture. Isn't the two thirds, one third below 15, uh, below 15 feet? Isn't that the, the building code requirement that allows that that dictates the two thirds? The building code, I, I mean, I will defer to ISD over here, but um, we've always been two thirds. Of the sidewalk and 10 feet above. The, um, yeah, the diagrams did not, was the, you know, two thirds, one third of the property line. Uh, if, I, if I may, the rest of the building is higher than that. Pardon? The rest of the building is much higher than that, the structure, the base structure. Yeah, right. What you're referring to refers to the total structure, the total height. Yeah, I was just referring to the building code. Right. You can't take, yeah, code you can't there, take right. this and you can't take this and smash them together. Okay, you get one or the other. So the building is higher than 15 feet total. On this. You're, you're talking about just the canopy piece. Correct. And I was just, and I was just right. referring to outside the, the purview of the building code. To the building code excerpt that dictates, you know, sort of projections within the public way. I just thought that the one third, two third rule was dictated by anything below 15 feet. Similar to the uh, uh, ten, eight foot, eight foot, and then one to one. There's you know, the other blue line here shows the projections above eight foot, uh, and then a one to one slope on up to twelve feet. But um, anyways, we had just done these diagrams. And that's what we were. We, didn't, we weren't aware that there was another requirement about two thirds, one third, dick, separate from the building code. So. Local ordinance will supersede the code in a case like that. The local ordinance is going to supersede the building code. Okay. That's why I assume that's why you're here. So. So, if you heard wrong, it sounds like continuing this until we figure out what exactly the right size of the dimension is, because that will determine what vertical this continuance you're actually seeing. For Rick and for Joe, so we continue this for two weeks while we uh, work this out. Does that work for you? Um, yeah, I think we'll, the continuance is fine. Okay. Uh, and so that would be the 13th? 14th. 14th, sorry. Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll see you guys then on the 14th. I'll we'll make a motion to continue this item until uh, uh, February 14th. Make a motion to continue uh, public hearing number two until February 14th, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. So uh, our next item is on a petition by Trinity Stewart LLC for the vertical discontinuance of a portion of Trinity Place, a public way in Boston proper, located on its east side at address number 40, south of Stewart Street, vertically above the grade of the sidewalk. This is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Discontinuance Plan, Vertical, Trinity Place, Boston Proper, one sheet date, January 24th. I've written the team in Hodgestein Hudson. Uh, this is part of the the same thing he was talking about. Uh, yeah. This one is actually the one that the city owns. This one is, has 14 feet of clearance. And it's only, I think it's four feet out for a seven foot wide tower. So it has a, it's two thirds. Yeah. One we just talked about it. And it'll be it traced internally drained like before. So, uh, I don't think this one needs to be reworked. So if any questions with that one, it's small. Over. Any questions on the uh, training place for both 
in your talk? So I think that we want to continue this so that we're going to have So that it is a cohesive. Yeah, right? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Do them both in the same year. Yeah. Okay. Is it two weeks? It's okay. I think that's fine, yeah. We'll handle them together. All right. Um, then I'll uh, continue the motion to continue this item until the February 14th. I'll make a motion to continue item PH3 on the agenda, uh, vertical discontinuous for Trinity Place uh, for two weeks until the next meeting. Second. All there? Aye. 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 So moved. Our next item is on by Trinity Stewart LLC for the making of specific repairs in the following public ways in Boston property, consisting of curb realignment and sidewalk reconstruction as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, especially pavement, street lights, street trees, planters, irrigation infrastructure, driveway curb cuts, and street furniture, including windscreens. The locations are Trinity Place on its eastly side at address number 40, south of Stewart Street, and Stewart Street on its south, uh, southerly side, east of Trinity Place. This was new business on January 17, 2019. This is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Austin Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Trinity Place, Stewart Street, 40 Trinity Place, Back Bay, Three Sheets, January 29th. Go on, Rico T. Howard, Sun Hudson. Not. This one's disconnected enough from this. Yeah, there, this okay. doesn't have any impact on the region. Thanks. As I was discussing earlier, um, we were widening this, proposing to widen the sidewalk on the southern side of Stewart Street. Today it's about 10 to 10 and a half feet. We were proposing to widen to about 16 and a half feet in front of the building, and it narrows down to about 12 feet at Clarendon, where there's a right turn lane. Uh, the furnishing zone will consider a four foot uh, path of uh, perennial pavers. We have proposed a few street trees uh, that be pin oaks, which I think I mentioned before maintains most of the leaves during the winter, so we'll have some wind mitigation year round. We also have three um, wind screens, they're about four by eight foot structures. Once again, part of the wind mitigation that was discussed with BPDA. Uh, behind the perio pavers, we have an equal wide cement concrete sidewalk. And behind that, there's about, uh, the maximum is like three feet of granite pavers, but most of them are on the property side and on the front so. uh, We're also at the inventory proposing the bump out here for the pedestrian curb ramps. Uh, the other ramps are accessible. They were built, rebuilt by the city back in like 2014. We are rebuilding this ramp, obviously, and then on the opposite side, we're just replacing the detectable warning panel, and we do have a variance from MAAB because the slopes here don't meet the accessibility. They're off by a few percentage points, so we do have that. And also along the stretch, we'll, uh, the pedestrian path will have a 2% cross slope, but the first thing you know, may have to be warped a little bit, and we have a variance for that, too. Um, coming around Trinity Place, we have the same format for the sidewalk, except the permeable pavers range from about 6 inches to four feet because the sidewalk here is only seven feet. Um, the pedestrian path to travel will be on the same concrete, will be five foot wide. And lastly, we have a 22 foot wide opening. This is mostly for uh, valet services and uh, some, some uh, delivery services here um, for the hotel itself. Now, the, next will be the bicycle lane that you're showing? That is? No. Yeah, I showed the wrong spot this plan. Go ahead. I just, the, the city actually painted it along the curb line, and that's what our traffic signal plan showed that it would be TD. So, I, so where's the right location? What's that? Where's the right location? Oh, it's on the sheet that you can't read that it runs. But uh, this is our traffic signal plan. Okay. Why do we have this amendment? It's over here, it's up against the curb, and then there's a, <coughs> there's a separation between that and the, and the vehicle. Flip the page, turn it around, please. The curbside usage, curbside regulations on your building side, beyond the pump out, what is it? What is it that you have? Over here is, well, we're, today we are proposing cement concrete. We are actually coming. Curbside. Curb rolls. Curb rolls. No parking, parking, uh, valet. So, oh, sorry. Our, um, there are three valet parking spots here for 40 Trinity and two existing valet spots for uh, the, the University of Lowe. And beyond that is the right turn lane. Sorry, Mr. Green. Uh, yeah. Other questions or comments? Uh, I just had one comment on um, Rick. We've talked about the catch basin. I went back and looked at it. I think you can fit a regular catch basin there. So I would appreciate if you guys could clean up that. It is 
sort of funky. Uh, that's why I sound like that. Yeah. You can rip all that stuff out just put I, one catch basin in. Actually, I don't mind doing that. If we just do a test part during construction and confirm the room we have there, absolutely. Contingent on the fact that it fits, but just the fact that we have those two structures out there, it actually, instead of two structures, it's only one. So. It's the weirdest get up I've seen, Mike. So I, uh, yeah, so if we can clean that up and just put in one catch basin, yeah, it would be an improvement to our system that I would appreciate. And if it doesn't fit, stick with the, uh, the drop it. Okay. Does that sound? That sounds reasonable. Thank you. And we have or will have an LMI for this? Yes. Yes. Other questions or comments? Any other thoughts? Members of the public. I'll a motion on this side. I'll make a motion to approve a joint a petition by Trinity Stewart LLC for the making of specific repairs as written to the record by the chair and is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, specific repair plan, Trinity Place, Stewart Street, 40 Trinity Place, Back Bay, three sheets dated January 29th, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. We're on to our fifth item. On a petition by Limac Realty LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk reconstruction, relocated pedestrian ramp and traffic signal infrastructure, as well as the closing of two driveway curb cuts. The locations are North Washington Street on its westerly side at address number 88, North of Valenti Way. It's at Anthony Rip Valenti Way on its northwesterly side, southwest of North Washington Street. This was new business on January 17th, 2019, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Austin Public Works Department, Engineering Division, specific repair plan, Valenti Way, 88 North Washington Street, West End, one sheet, dated December 21st, 2019. Good morning. Oh, Good morning, Rick Latini with Howard Stein Hudson. I am here representing the owner with uh, Tom, Tom McKay with Limac LLC. Uh, this is in conjunction with a hotel that would be built on this it's a 2,100 square foot lot off the corner of North Washington and Valenti Way. We were asked to come here early from BTD uh, to better coordinate with the North Washington Street Bridge and a potential bus lane project in this area, so they wanted us to get the sidewalk work out of the way quickly. Uh, we are proposing a typical six foot wide bump out. Right now there's three lanes of traffic down Valenti Way, and there's not really that much volume. This is one way. The next block, the Beverly Street turns into two lanes anyhow, so we'd be providing a protected parking lane here. Uh, the idea would probably be in the future when we come back with the hotel, they want that to be in some of the valley space or something like that. Um, and so we are building a new curb ramp, obviously, and the reciprocal ramp. Uh, Disabilities actually asked us to build the next ramp to the north, which we agreed to do, and the reciprocal ramp to that also. This is all cement, concrete, city standards. Uh, the last thing we're doing, some to feasibility, is uh, relocating traffic signals. It's one on North Washington Street is in the middle of the sidewalk, so we're going to try to get that closer to the curb line. And lastly, we're going to see if we move this signal today closer to where the pedestrian curb ramp is. So that'll take any questions on this. You've talked to uh, Don Burgess folks relative to the signal relocations? We are actually in the middle of doing a construction management plan and a traffic signal plan combined uh, based on our last meeting. So I uh, you mentioned that you wanted to see the CMP, so. Yep. That's that's a process with Robbie in our office. Okay, but somebody's reaching out to Don, right? Now. Yes, it is. Okay. Oh, sorry, I should correct that. Someone will reach out to Don. We don't have a plan yet, sorry. In what conditions would we not move the traffic signals currently on the sidewalk? I, don't, I guess in this case, I find like a fiber out here that cost me a hundred thousand. Yeah, there's, there's probably nothing there, but we just, I just don't want to find a surprise. So that's the why I said if it's feasible, it'd be. We just work there. If there are sort of minor things under there, we may just still be a guy to figure out how to actually coordinate with those, just so that we don't have a signal that's sitting on the sidewalk. I don't suspect anything though, because one, one was just a pedestrian activation si si signal, and the other one's like just a ten foot traffic signal. So I don't think there'll be problems. I just don't know the answer yet. So. It does seem odd that they put it in the middle of the sidewalk. It generally doesn't go there for some reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if it's our, there's, it's just suspicious that there's a catch basin with a drain manhole right behind it. It might be a DI to a sump manhole. Yeah. We'll find out. Yeah. What, what's the status of the building? Um, Where are you in the process? We've passed the ZBA and the BRA. 
hurdles to get over. Yeah, they have, they have complete, I don't think they've completed the, the design completely of the hotel, right? That's still in the process. No. So. There's a few changes and things like that. Public questions or comments? Any other talk? Okay. That was the public. All on the motion on that side? I'll make a motion to approve the petition by Climat Realty LLC for making specific repairs within the following public ways in Boston proper, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk reconstruction, relocated pedestrian ramps and traffic signal infrastructure, as well as the closing of two driveway quarter cups, as all is read into the record by the chair, and has shown a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair Plan, Way 88 North Washington Street, West End, one sheet dated December 21st, 2000. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is on a petition by one Dalton owner LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following roadways in Roxbury, consisting of curb realignment, roadway, sidewalk, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated specialty pavement, street lights, street trees, planters, irrigation infrastructure, groundwater recharge infrastructure, bollards, and driveway curb cuts. The locations are Dalton Street at address number one, in between Belvedere Street and Clearway Street. Belvedere Street on its southwesterly side between Dalton Street and Clearway Street. St. Germain Street, generally at Dalton Street. Clearway Street, a private way open to public travel between Dalton Street and Belvedere Street. This was new business on January 17th, 2019, and this has shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair, 1-7 Dalton Street, Belvedere Street, Clearway Street, uh, Extension Private Way, Back Bay, Five Sheets, Day, April 2018. Uh, good morning, Chris Ani with Niche Engineering. I'm here with Jocelyn Stewart with Cambridge Seven Associates and uh, Bob Fitzpatrick with Wilmer Hill. Um, turn it over to Jocelyn to talk about the project. Hi, again, my name is Jocelyn Stewart. Uh, we have essentially three items up for review here, and uh, the first being that we've modified the curvature of the Dalton Street to St. Germain corner. We did this for uh, to improve fire truck access. And I think I gave you a, a couple of dimensions last time. We modified it, I said, from 20 to 30 feet. We actually modified it from 20 to 25 feet, but we moved it an additional five feet or seven feet back, so that's where I got the 30-foot dimension, just to clarify that. Um, the second item up for review is that we uh, widened the sidewalk along the one Dalton side of the project. And um, the sidewalk is around 14 foot 5 inches here. We increased it in order to allow for better pedestrian access, particularly at the drop-off as well as at the hotel uh, entrance here. Uh, and then the third item uh, for review is that we uh, modified the canopies slightly in order to, floor, in order to improve wind mitigation. Uh, we extended the canopy above the residential drop-off area here. Um, along Dalton Street, and we extended them ever so slightly on uh, Belvedere Street uh, to, again, uh, improve wind mitigation based on the analysis of the wind studies. That is it. Uh, this image here is, gives you a sense of the, of the dimension, dimensional changes on the uh, sidewalk, and this just gives you a sense, a visual sense of the canopies. Questions? Yeah, like portion that's repair, but it seems like a uh, question that's important for the day. And heated sidewalks. Yes. So, can you talk a little bit about the performance centers of those? What do they? How well do they work? Uh, maintenance issues. That well, they're right? they're a hydronic system, yeah. so they um, they they will heat the sidewalk. So you just pump hot water basically through. A, a yes, hot water. Um, uh, actually, it's sort of a glycol mix, so that right. they don't freeze themselves. Exactly. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, they they surround in terms of in terms of location. They literally do surround the entire property um, where all pedestrian access is, as well as the drop-off area. So uh, the I think from a performance perspective, they're about as good as you can get uh, for. A, and how deep below the concrete? They are below the. Uh, well, they're actually in the, in the, 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 concrete, the, yeah, the final five-inch concrete topping. 
And for notifications of any utilities that might need to do any emergency work that was leading to or from the building, how does that, well, they're, they're, does that work? Yeah, they're, they're broken down into sections so that if, you, if one was able, if one had to make to some broken. sort of a, an adjustment to the uh, utilities below, you would have to take out the section of these and then we build the section, okay. yes. John? In a situation where a utility company needs to do emergency or normal repairs, who is responsible for fixing the sidewalk? And it is clearly stated in yes. the maintenance agreement, which I'm going to assume yes. is executed right now, or is it still in the process? Yes, existing agreement, and we just need to make amendments. Oh, so this, so it's a, this is a modification of the specific my, repair, my, so we my, already my, have an executed specific repair yes. agreement, um, and what we're doing here doesn't change any of the, um, what was in the original agreement. Justin, Justin, right? Jocelyn, Jocelyn, Jocelyn. Mice. Chris, Chris, Chris. I, I need to get an in tag. Yeah. <laughs> Taking too much valuable time. Chris, if you could uh, let the niche team and Amy, if you could let the Harvard Stein team, because they are doing most of our work, not our clients' works. In the signature block, rather than just the initials, I want the full name of those who are involved. Yep. Spelled out. Okay. But I think the heated sidewalk is great technology. Um, it's going to reduce salt use, and I'm all about reducing salt yeah, use. Yeah, we agree. Um, but I need a copy of that LMI, a recorded copy of that LMI, so that we can attach that to our GIS records because we've got major drain lines that run. So we'll give you sidewalk. the recorded copy that we have now, and if you want any modifications, now's the time because we can, we're going to record this against the new specific repair plan. So well, if it's a responsibility to replace it, that works for us. I just, we need to know that because unless it's linked yeah. to our GIS. So either this agreement works yeah. for the new specific repair provisions or we need to modify it. But it's like, as far as what's in that agreement, it's all accurate, but if water and sewer needs additional language, we can now add it. Okay, I don't anticipate that we will, as long as we um, make it highly visible. We'll, we'll get you a copy of the agreement. Okay. And these, these sidewalks aren't in yet, correct? Are what? The sidewalks aren't in yet, right? No. no, no, no because, no. like here, you, they have a major project that's going to be out in front of your building. Uh, Understood. Next yes, week. We, yeah, we understand. Uh, hopefully. We're fully, fully aware of that. After Tuesday. <laughs> right. Very good. Chris, are you going to be supervising, inspecting any of the construction work, or is it your contract uh, that's going to? I mean, so the construction's been ongoing for a bunch of years now. Yeah, we've, the site we've, work. Just, I mean, yeah, we're doing construction admin for this, so we'll be out there, um, you know, monitoring process or yeah. progress. Chris, if you if, if you remember when that heated sidewalks are being done, if you could just let the PIC office know. Sure. Some of us might want to just go take a look at it. It sounds like possible. Sure. Makes sense. Okay. Anything else? Any other questions or comments? Everybody? Members of the public? All right. Motion on second. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by one Dalton owner, LLC, for the making of specific repairs within Dalton Street, Belvedere Street, St. Germain Street, and Clearway Street, as read into the record by the chair, and as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repair, uh, 1 through 7 Dalton Street, Belvedere Street, Clearway Street Extension, Private Way, Back Bay, 5 sheets, dated April 2018. Second. All favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Our next item is also on a petition by one Dalton owner LLC for the granting of a projection license uh, for the installation of canopies and flagpoles over portions of the following public ways in Roxbury. Locations of Dalton Street on its easterly side at address number one between Belvedere Street and Clearway Street, and Belvedere Street on its southwesterly side between Dalton Street and Clearway Street. This was new business on January 17th, uh, 2019. And this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, License Plan 1-7, Dalton Street, Belvedere Street, Back Bay, Four Sheets, date April 2018. So again, Chris Ani, Niche Engineering, Jocelyn Stewart, Cambridge 7, Bob Fitzpatrick, Wilmer Hale. Um, this is for the canopy modifications that Jocelyn just explained, so I'll let him Run through them quickly again. I can explain it again. <laughs> okay. Um, got ahead of myself. So the, the idea is along Dalton Street, we have extended the canopy at the residential drop off, uh, again, due to the wind analysis study. And then uh, along Belvedere Street, we extended them slightly in order to, again, mitigate uh, wind based on the wind study. So 
And when you say you have extended, it is extended not into the sidewalk, but to the length of the sidewalk. Along Dalton Street, it's into the length of the sidewalk, and into, along Belvedere Street, it's, 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 it's into, into, the the, into the sidewalk. Right. They're, they're not getting any closer to the curb. They're not, yes, that's correct. Thank you for clarifying. Questions or comments on objection lists? I'll entertain a motion on objection lists. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by one Dalton owner LLC for the granting of a projection license as written to the record by the chair and is shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division License Plan 1-7 Dalton Street, Belvedere Street, Back Bay, four sheets dated April 2018. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thanks. Thank you. Our next item is on a petition by Dinosaur 1550 LLC for the making of specific repairs within Soldier Field Place. Brighton, located on its easterly and northerly sides, generally at the rear of 1550 Soldiers Field Road, consisting of curb realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, street lighting infrastructure, street trees, irrigation infrastructure, and driveway curb cuts. This was new business on January 17, 2019, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, Soldier Field Place, Public Way, Boston, three sheets dated December 2018. Uh, good morning, Mr. Commissioner, members of the Commission. Chairman McQuilty and Miller uh, with me today presenting is Deb Danik from Niche Engineering um, and Scott Oran from Dinosaur 1550 LLC, the uh, project developer. Uh, Guy from Howard Stein Hudson is here as well. Um, very briefly, um, not as long as last time, I'll give a brief uh, just project background. Um, again, the site's located on the northern riverfront edge, the Brighton neighborhood along Soldiers Field Road near their intersection with um, Leo Berman and Parkway, just north of the pike. As noted uh, at our hearing two weeks ago, um, Soldiers Field Road is a DCR road. Um, it is not a, a city road, so today we're focusing on Soldiers Field Place, which runs between the two project sites. The overall combined project site is about uh, 1.65 total acres. Principal site is a little over an acre at 1550 Soldiers Field Road. That's the much larger building. The associated smaller site is uh, a little over a half acre at 21 Soldiers Field Place. Um, the overall proposal for the project is two buildings which have been master planned and designed together. Um, a six-story residential building, 211 market rate uh, apartment um, residential units at 1550 and 38 uh, income restricted affordable condominium home ownership units at the smaller uh, Soldiers Field Place building, four-story building. Combined floor area is about 223,000 gross square feet total of 176 on-site parking spaces shared between uh, the two buildings. Um, underground garage at 1550, the larger building, and uh, 27 ground floor garage spaces at the condo building. Uh, brief update from our new business hearing a few weeks ago. Um, we have submitted a full draft CMP yesterday to DTD. Um, I'm assuming you've looked at it in all its fine oh, details. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that was a request from the last one. We did submit that yesterday. Sorry we didn't give you more time, but it is in as requested. Uh, we also have uh, from Howard Stein Hudson today an overall graphic plan of um, the improvements along um, Soldiers Field Road and um, Leo Birmingham and kind of how we fit in in that. So we can go over that as well, which was a request from the last time. Um, with that, I'll let Deb go over the details. and. We'll answer any questions you might have afterwards. Thank you again. I'm Beth Danik with Niche Engineering. Maybe I'll start just kind of with the bigger picture of the DCR and then we'll into our sites. So as Nick mentioned, um, part of the 1550 Soldiers Field Road and 21 Soldiers Field Place project is to work with the DCR on the mitigation and their work along the deal um, Birmingham Parkway and Soldiers Field Road. So this plan shows the extent of the portion of the project and the work. And then you can see 1550 Soldiers Field Road is actually helping with all the, all the improvements along Soldiers Field Road as part of this, which includes new sidewalks, um, some landscaping, and then some changes at the intersection to make the area a little more pedestrian friendly. So as we move into our site over here, located basically at the western end of this work on Soldiers Field Road, we're um, requesting some approval for specific repairs on Soldiers Field Place, which is the city of Boston Street. Um, 
Currently, the existing sidewalks on both sides of the road are seven feet wide. We're proposing on the, the north side where Soldiers Field Place, excuse me, 1515 Soldiers Field Road building, the larger building is, to bump up the sidewalk a couple of feet in order to provide a nine and a half foot wide sidewalk, which will allow us to meet um, the great streets and complete streets requirements to provide a landscape strip with trees, pervious pavers. We're also going to work, there's some overhead utilities, um, some um, overhead poles which have the street lights on them. We're going to work to ground those utilities underground as well as provide um, standard acorn street lights as part of city street lights as part of this. Also within our landscape strip, we'll have under drainage for the trees, which connects to, um, as part of bumping out the sidewalk, we're going to replace the existing catch basin, the UWC catch basin, so the under drainage will connect um, if it gets to a full and discharge to there, as well as there will be some tree irrigation um, to try and keep these trees alive. When we work back towards the building, there'll be a five foot wide cement concrete sidewalk um, for pedestrians to use. The existing sidewalk also had two driveway openings into it to get to the commercial building. We're proposing to um, close those both off and provide two new driveway entrances, one to the underground parking garage and another one to the um, loading area and kind of back of the house stuff. On the south side of Soldier's Field Place, um, the existing, we're proposing to maintain the existing seven foot wide sidewalk. Um, the existing site is a parking lot, so it has uh, two driveway entrances. We'll be closing both of those and doing one new driveway entrance. Um, the 21 Soldier's Field Place has an at grade parking level on the first level of the building. When we came here for new, uh, new business, one of the comments we heard was we were proposing to mill and overlay only a portion of Soldier's Field Place in front of the building. So we've committed to uh, doing the length of Soldier's Field Place from the corner of our property up to Soldier's Field Road with a new top once all the work is done. The other thing that I forgot to mention for our proposed work, we are proposing a mid-block crossing to give the connection between the two buildings for um, it's a little hard to see, but there's some great outside landscaped area on the 20, um, 21 Soldier Field Place, and then there'll be some roof deck amenities on the building across the street as well. Um, the other thing I do want to mention that changed from our plan from the last time is that we've updated to um, show some bike racks within the um, furnished zone, within the um, tree zone. So there are six bike racks there. What is our minimum? Driveway opening width. Okay. So quick thing. Yeah. Is, Deborah, is it a one way? I mean, I didn't catch you. Know, the 12 foot one. Sorry. The 12 foot one. How is it? The 12 foot driveway, you got two. One Over for 20. Yeah, 15, 15, yeah. yeah, so yeah. this is more of a, this is a loading dock area. So this will be, yeah. yeah, so it's that grade. Um, and this will be for when people move in and out. There are transformers also there. So if anything needs to happen with Garbage them. trucks. Um, I Solid know, waste, where is it? How? Recycling, garbage removal. Is that a garbage? No, garbage, garbage removal is actually done off the west side of the street, off the, off the street. It's really only from tenant move in, move out, and for access to the transformer. So your recycling efforts and all of that stuff is going to be off the street? Yes, on the west side. There's a pull off. Right? Yeah, there's a pull off. So, no, there's a, uh, there's a no parking zone. Okay. So you're going to do that in a no parking zone? Yes. I believe that's all. City pickup. Yeah, it's going to be city pickup. So, what are you rolling out? Dumpsters? Dumpsters? Yes. Yes. Compacted dumpsters, yes. So, across the furnishing zone? Yes. Right in this area here. We have trees on the other side. So, obviously, the concern is you're ruining the uh, furniture, the planning zone. Can you give me some thought? Because uh, who is responsible for your solid waste and recycling disposal? Is it the city resources or are you contracting that work I out? I believe the city. Okay, because uh, when our city, to the little I know, to the very little I know, when our garbage trucks go by, I don't think we call someone and say, hey, get, get your thing rolled out. Because if that doesn't take place, your containers may be compromising the use of the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. So could you please read Debra, speak to someone to stop yes. So we can connect you with Brian Compton's. Yeah, well, that's we'll make sure we do that. And, and of course, there'll be professional management and whatnot to coordinate yeah, all this. So if, if it becomes an issue where 
you, it is inconvenient for you to rely on city resources, you may want to contract that work out. So that way your private person can call you, can do that. building superintendent and say, hi, I'm yes. going to be there in five minutes, get it out. Yeah, thank you, that's a good recommendation. So one of the questions I have is, there's no on-street parking in proposed under this plan. It's almost stopping. I know uh, there's existing on-street Guy Busa again, Harvard St. Hudson. Uh, there is existing on-street parking out here, and we're proposing to maintain that. It runs on uh, 1550 side. It's on both sides. So it's going along it's the furnishing side. planting zone? So the furnishing zone is trees and then pervious pavers. Pervious pavers, so it's not like a planting. Oh, no, no, no. no. Right, right. You'll be able to open car doors. Exactly right, right. So we're going to maintain the existing uh, Curve regulations along here. The, so, uh, do you, what are the regulations? Is it res, is it no, it's all street right resident just, parking? No, it's it's unrestricted. Free, free parking. Parking. So, so how many units parking. are going in here? Two hundred and forty-nine. Any affordable? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, so thirty-eight of them. The entire affordable. The entire smaller building is condominium home ownership affordable. Yeah. Yes. There, there's a garage in the, under the building for the yeah. residents. So who, for the affordable unit, do they have a affordable parking at the garage? Or is it they, the have, they have yes. 27 parts, 27 houses. spaces there for the 38 units. But what I'm saying is what the cost is. Is the affordable units, are, are they paying the same as the regular? Uh, That's not regulated uh, within the affordable ordinance, so they pay the, the, the reason parking. I ask this question is because it's speed over the parking lot speed. Is that? Yeah. Are they exactly. going to go do that? Yes. They want resident parking because right. they can't afford to be in the garage, and it falls on the city. Right. So, I mean, it's a reoccurring problem that we've had with yeah. those. But those 27 spaces are going to be available to the affordable. I, I think it would be impractical. Uh, That's the thought. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It appears there's parking on both sides of the street right now. Yeah. There is. Not, not along this, this curve. Those wouldn't be included. Uh, uh, extra for that. Right. Towards the end of the road. Too right. Right. Yeah. So you're going to have a signage and marking plan put together because I haven't seen it yet. So. I, I believe it's within the uh, uh, restoration plan of the uh, CMP, uh, but there's really no signage out here. Just sneak in my office and just drop that off. I, yeah, I think it was close to five o'clock. <laughs> 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 but uh, we are maintaining uh, handicap parking that's out here today. That's really the only regulation out here. Um, I don't believe there's street cleaning regs. I don't believe there's any kind of regs. Well, obviously, and, when, well, you can put whatever you would like. Right. On. Obviously, when you're introducing a mid-block crosswalk, you need clearances well, for visibility, et cetera. Yes. Yeah. So we expect to see that. So we can work with you for whatever signage you might like out here. We could put two hour, we could put whatever you would like out here. Okay. The, the tap has been pending for a bit, too, so I think that's been back and forth on that. Okay. I guess signage and curbs aside, though, I mean, it's wrong. You feel comfortable though that a mid-block crossing that close to a curb of that angle would still be safe for pedestrians to be able to yeah. cross. Very low speed. The best way I'm going to say that yeah. Keith is, Mr. Busa, you are the people who yeah. stand the yeah. You stand the pants. I did. Right. Okay. So I mean, this is not to be taken lightly. No. The Chief makes a yeah. point. Yeah. All right. So yeah. I don't know what side distance are there. But the person who is going to step out of the crosswalk from here probably to the other side. Okay. So keep yeah, all of that thing on new cons all due consideration. Yeah. Mission zero, not mission plus one. Guys volunteered to, to utilize the crosswalk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's conceivable that you would want to restrict parking. Um, yeah. I guess we'll go on the inbound into the street until after the crosswalk where you have a curve. Right. Right. And you've got a small strip where you could have parking today, and then your crosswalk. So maybe you don't that, park until after. That happens to be where the handicap parking is. Uh, that, that crossing is going to occur regardless of the crosswalk. We understand that, but we want to engineer it, engineer it so it's safe. Increase sight yeah. distance. Does that handicap spot serve these properties or different properties? Not quite. There's an adult daycare that serves the adult daycare. Oh, yeah. This, this, you know, this is a cul-de-sac, this dead end, so the, the traffic volumes are very low. Mm -hmm. this, this is a daycare. It's uh, it would we'll be to the right of the to the right of that building. To the other side. Would actually be helpful for them. Yeah. It would be closer. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll <clears throat> yeah, we'll move it closer to their building. I think there are curb cuts down there now, so that that, that could be wise. 
there's a curve that they're not yes. Which one's those? Yeah. Other questions or comments on this specific problem? Mm -hmm. Well, I have a motion on this specific problem. Make a motion to approve a petition by Dinosaur 1550 LLC for the making of specific repairs within Soldiers Field Place. As read into the record by the chair and is shown in a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, Soldiers Field Place, Public Way, Boston, three sheets dated December 2018. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Our next item is on a petition by Dinosaur 1550 LLC for the granting of an earth retention license for the installation of temporary a temporary earth support system within Soldiers Field Place in Brighton, located on its easterly and northerly sides, generally at the rear of 1550 Soldiers Field Road. This was new business on January 17, 2019, and is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division. Conceptual temporary and excavation support, 1550 Soldiers Field Road and 21 Soldiers Field Place, Brighton, two sheets, state of January 2019. Thank you. Um, I'm Deborah Danik with Mitch Engineering, and we're, we have in front of you a for a license for a temporary earth support. We previously mentioned that the building at 1550 Soldiers Field Road um, has parking. I'm not sure that we actually mentioned that it was underground. So um, our proposed building is um, pretty close to the property line in order to excavate and construct the underground parking in the basement associated with this building. We're requesting that we can install some soldier pile and lagging under the sidewalk on the north side of Soldiers Field Place. Um, the soldiers, the, excuse me, the soldier pilot lagging will actually extend a little bit into Soldiers Field Road, but we're working with the DCR for that approval as part of our approval as well. But the portion along Soldiers Field Place, um, the soldier pile lagging will be cut down six feet below grade when it's not in use, um, and we really just expect it as a need in order to get the building constructed. Do you, is that part of the point? Is it slowly increasing or reducing, or am I just imagining? It's six feet yeah. under a sidewalk, ten feet under a roadway. Irrespective of how far that's, it comes into the sidewalk. Correct. Okay. this is at least very close. Six by six by six boxes. What you? Thank you. Yeah. And just to confirm, this this uh, soil pile line will not need to go under the roadway. It will be closed. It will be contained within the sidewalk area. Questions or comments on your side? Your time? Okay. <coughs> uh, there was a public. Before you motion, why dinosaur? Yeah. 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 Sorry. How much time do you have? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you an email. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, with that, I will entertain a motion on dinosaur 1550s or retention license. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by Dinosaur 1550 LLC for the granting of an earth retention license in Soldier Field Place as read into the record by the chair. As shown on a set of plans entitled the City of Boston Public Works Department, like Engineering Division, Conceptual Temporary Excavation Support, 1550 Soldiers Field Road, and 21 <laughs> Soldiers Field Place, Brighton, two sheets, dated January 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So Thank you. <laughs> Our next item is on a petition by Level 3 for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow within the following public ways in Boston proper. Locations are Court Street, east of Court Square, uh, east generally of the rear of 201 Washington Street, and Court Square, south of Court Street. This was new business on January uh, 17th, 2019, and this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, 201 Washington Street, Boston, three sheets in July 23rd, 2018. Good morning, Welcome gentlemen. Uh, Shelly Cullen with Access Engineering and Mike Weimer yeah, with, with Level, level three. 3 Communications. So last time we were here, you had some questions and um, requests. Yep. So what we did, we were able to move the manhole around the corner, get it off Court Street, and um, and bring it over here. So that that's that was one thing. The other thing you had some questions about how level three was accessing uh, the system. So I printed this up. Um, this shows the Verizon network that they are um, that they already access. So their excuse me, their loop A is over here on Congress. So they um, jump into the Verizon manhole right here. So they are already in this manhole. So they're, they're looking to, uh, to lease this. They already have the application in. 
And so what, they, what they're going to be doing is getting over to this manhole here, which is where this new construction uh, breaks in. You want to see that? Yeah, so that, um, that's, they get this far right here in the horizon. So they need to break out of that to get over here and then and end up in a private property manhole. So do you have PIC approval for gaining access to that Verizon duct? We have a pending application with Verizon for the uh, for a breakout. I'm talking that. about the existing where you are right now, where you come out of the level three at Congress into the Verizon and down the street. We don't have it yet because we don't. We're, we're not actually. She misspoke on that. We're so not I'm actually sorry. in that segment as of yet. Um, we're trying to license from State Street. Uh, I'm sorry, from Congress Street down to the manhole that we're going to break out of. That's we've had pending application with them for over a year. This is sort of a sequence of question. If for some reason you yeah. don't get that. That would, say, that would make this particular dig move, right? It would make it longer, correct. Right, so you'd be coming back to us for correct. basically from Congress and court yes. all the way up. So should this action happen second to that? Right. Well, it should happen together, an amended grant application for the Verizon installation along with the second action being the dig. So we're approving you to enter Verizon system, and then we're approving you to extend beyond Verizon system. Is that what this action is? Uh, so it just doesn't have the Verizon right. component of it. So if you're not already in that Verizon system, then you're going to need an amended grant of location with Verizon to be within their system. Um, okay. And that should be a companion uh, action to this so that you're, you're getting the whole run together. Um, you're getting the dig before you're getting permission to get to where you're digging. Understood. Because, which means there have to be a co-applicant. Right. Not for this part, but there should be a separate action here that is Verizon and them together amending the Verizon grant so that they're both in that initial thing. Because if I may say so, to add to what the chief may have alluded, I think that appetite for this commission or IS1, our appetite to tear up the intersection of Congress, State, Devonshire is almost zero. Okay? Zero. So if you for some reason cannot understanding with Verizon, don't naturally assume that we are going to allow you to lengthen this all the way to state and Congress. That is going to be awkward. Yeah, we, okay. we, yeah, we weren't assuming that, definitely. We, uh, right, so we're still just waiting on Verizon to finish. They've already done their conduit search, they've done their survey, yeah. they've done the rotting and roping portion of it, so the last thing they need to do is place interduct, and then they can issue us a, a license. After we receive a license from Verizon, is that when we go yeah, for so the grant come, application? Yeah, so come back here for an amended grant application, but we don't want to vote on allowing you to dig because you could go and make that installation and, and then have it go action. nowhere. Right. And now we have a dig for no reason because we're, you were never able to get to the Verizon okay. system. And now you're back for another dig. Gotcha. Okay. So Amy, what is your guidance? Uh, so it, it depends really on the timing that you think you're going to get out of Verizon. If you think that we can continue this for like a month and that maybe you'll have an answer for Verizon, then we can get that action to catch up with this one. I, I would think, yeah, I would think a month would be adequate for that. Sufficient? Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. So I'll listen to other questions or comments. Yeah. All right. I'll entertain a motion uh, to uh, continue this item until the February 28th PIC meeting. I'll make a motion to continue uh, item PH10 uh, for one month. One month. One month uh, for the grant of location application. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, our 11th item is on a petition by Verizon New England Inc. for a grant of location with lead company status to install new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow within the following public ways in Boston proper. Kilmarnock Street south of Boylston Street, generally at address number 33, and Boylston Street east of Kilmarnock Street. Uh, this was new business on January 17th, 2019, and this says shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, grant of location plan, Boylston Street at Kilmarnock Street, Back Bay, one sheet dated July 20th, 2018. Hi, good guess. morning, gentlemen. Um, I'm Karen Levesque. I'm with Verizon. Um, Nick was here um, for the new business, and there were some questions um, that needed to be addressed. We're placing 360 feet of new conduit from Boylston to, um, onto Kilmanark to the building. It is not replacing existing conduit in the road that was collapsed. We had our original route to the building was on private property. 
and that has since collapsed and the new and the property owner will not allow us to go make those repairs because they had just paved their lot so we had to come up with another route <laughs> we still have both these are coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, and this is for service for that building? That for that building. That work on their property? Um, it's, uh, the, there's private alleys there, and there's the parking lot. So I think the private alley got um, paved as well as the parking lot. I was told both access ways were, were paved and we weren't allowed to. So by the, by the person who used the service? So like the, the, the person who pays and doesn't want you to come in is the same person who needs the connection? Yes. <laughs> so if we say no to, then they're back to their private property. Right. Their private connection. So this is a lateral to them. Um, they yes, try yes. to push into the roadway. Yes. Because they don't. Yeah. yeah, because it's partially That's the private right. alley and through the parking lot. The existing. The can can you have the property yeah. owner contact me? I appreciate this when you guys are in, but yeah. I think that, that um, just so that we can explain that that just because you repaved doesn't we did too, um, so we you know we're kind of in the same boat. Right. They had yeah they had just repaved. I think Kilmarnock and Boylston haven't been that section. Right. Yeah. No. But I'm just saying that we're not looking to take private property laterals just because they don't want them. Right. Um, we're also extending, we're also putting in additional conduit on Boylston Street. We're putting in um, four conduits on Boylston Street because our conduit run from that, man, from that manhole doesn't go to connect to our other manhole. So we're, we're putting in an additional spare that we're capping off at Boylston, at but, the Kilimanjaro. Monarch. But you are trying to take advantage of this petition to do that work, right? You would, would you be here asking us to do that if it wasn't for this customer? No. This is just a convenience while you're in the ground. Thing. Right. Okay. Yeah, so I think that I, I yeah. think that the, the building who's saying that they will not let you go back where you are should should contact us. Okay. Maybe because Boylston Street, this part, you know, yeah. by the I, 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 you know yeah. someone should pay this, no one is gonna touch it, it should be us. Yep. Uh, would that mean a withdraw with or uh or continue yeah. in case of any other time the conversation. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we can continue, uh, and if they get in contact with us in the next two weeks, um, okay. we can resolve it. Uh, and if, yep. if the case is going to go back on private property, you just come back with the broad. Okay. If there's a reason why it's here, then we would entertain it. Entertain it at that time. Yeah. Okay. I understand the position you guys are in. We just want right. that conversation. Yeah. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to continue this item until the February 14th. Uh, I'll think a motion to continue public hearing number 11 till the 14th of February. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So Thank, you. Thank you. The twelfth item is on a petition by the City of Boston, uh, Office of the Chief of Streets, Transportation, and Sanitation for the widening and relocation of the existing right of way lines of Mystic Avenue, a public way, Charlestown, located on southwesterly side generally at Main Street. This was new business on January 17, 2019. And this is as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Widening and Relocation Plan, Mystic Avenue Public Way, Charlestown, one sheet, dated October 27, 2018. Cool. All right, so this is us. Um, we are widening. <laughs> We have a parcel of land um, that is just currently a, a public works parcel, um, and we are widening the roadway over it um, because we're putting in a major effort line. And so rather than having private property easements over a public works parcel, it's just going to be a part of the right of way so that there will be one continuous rental location for this line in our street. Is it public works or an office of the boss? Well, so it's. We believe it's part of BTD, um, but okay. I'm, I mean, got it, got we've got, it. got, we've got a catch-all here with Chris. So uh, yeah. uh, and uh, BAC doing the work? Am I paying BAC? Or? What's that? Oh, no, this is this is just to enable Eversource's work. They prepare the plans. Um, so you're just so taking that. advantage of Correct. it. Correct. Yeah, this, is, this makes it so they don't have to come to us for different ways to get one line. Maybe, uh, that's always the thing to take. Any questions or comments on this project? Todd. <laughs> 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 Members of the public. 
Right. Uh, I will entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to approve a petition by the City of Boston Office of the Chief of Streets uh, for the widening and relocation on Mystic Avenue as read into the record by the Chair as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Widening and Relocation Plan Mystic Avenue Public Way Charlestown one sheet dated October 27, 2018. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Our next item is on a petition by Eversource Energy for a grant of location to install new electrical transmission line infrastructure within the following public ways in Charlestown. Uh, Mystic Avenue, generally northwest of Main Street. Main Street, generally uh, between Mystic Avenue and Alfred Street. Alfred Street, generally northwest of Main Street. This was new business on January 17th, 2019, and this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Grant of Location Plan, Mystic Avenue, Main Street, and Alfred Street, Boston. Ten sheets dated January 25th, 2019. Good morning. I'm Rob Collins. I'm the project manager for this project. Uh, with me, I brought Nicole Logan from our outreach folks, uh, John Owey, Mike Sutton from DHB, our uh, traffic engineer, and uh, Sean Shortell from Outreach as well. As mentioned during the uh, new business meeting uh, two weeks ago, our plan is to head down head from the Sullivan Crossing Railroad, railroad tracks down through the parking lot uh, into what will become Mystic Ave, or excuse me, Moffa Way rather, uh, during the, uh, the uh, street reconfiguration project that's happening in a few years, and then head up Alford, uh, continue on out Alford to Arlington, and then across over into Ryan Playground. And that's, this is part of the overall uh, Mystic to Woburn project, which is installation of a new underground uh, transmission line between the two substations. Um, last week, or two weeks ago when we met, you had a few questions, uh, uh, specifically outreach, and I'll let Nicole talk about the outreach that we do and have done, and we'll continue to do okay. Good morning. As Rob said, Nicole Bowden, Project Outreach for Eversource. Um, for the area, there are very limited abutters in that area. Um, I think when I last looked at the list, it was somewhere between six and seven. Um, in the past few months, we've actually sent them a letter talking to them about the realignment project with the city of Boston and how we need to now um, change project routes. And so they did receive that from us. In the upcoming months, probably towards the end of spring, beginning of summer, we'll hold an information session, sort of a pre-construction meeting, letting them know we have a contractor on board once we secure that contractor, um, as well as the next steps for the area. Um, That'll be at a local restaurant, something very intimate, just for the you know small amount of residents in that area. Um, so that that's our plan for the abutting property owners. Hi, Dave. Yes. First of all, thank you so much for your outreach efforts. You are correct that there may be only a few abutters, mm -hmm. but there's a huge uh, business communities in the area centered in the city of Everett that is going to be extremely anxious about this work, so have you reached out to the city of Everett's Chamber of Commerce? Yeah. They have yeah. a, can you amplify? So I actually meet with the Everett Island and Business Group once a month. We actually, yeah. yes, I am. We don't have a meeting scheduled for this month or February. We'll pick back up in March. A lot of the work is winding down. Um, a lot of the work that Encore Casino is doing is, is winding down. They did some um, sidewalk and full depth reconstruction over there because of the cold temps. They're actually not able to do that. And a lot of the work we're doing is not stopped, but winding down again with the cold temperatures. But we do meet monthly, and they are aware of the Mystic East Eagle Chelsea project. And as we go in for March, we'll remind them of this project and that this project is coming as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate you adding testimony to, through this forum that you will reach out to that advocacy group yes. and inform and the MBTA, I assume you've had about some conversations with the I'm sorry? MBTA. The MBTA, uh, given both their bus yard and Solomon's So the MBTA, we have reached out to them, and we are continuing to work with them, uh, specifically, if nothing else, because we're trying to go underneath the railroad track in that area. So they're very aware of the project and, and our review. Uh, yeah, I would just say Karen Burns is the sure. bus operations. Right. He's also resident. a neighbor resident. <laughs> yeah, you probably want to make sure. Yeah, I know Karen. Karen. So yes. I'll, I'll introduce you yeah, to Karen. And Karen and Karen and yep. that both of them. Will do. Yep. Where's the Rockwell Africa? It's the Ryan Playground. Ryan Playground. Rutherford Drive is right here, so we're crossing Rutherford Avenue yep. right now, where we go in the Yeah, once you go to the. Yeah. 
Because it was separate cable that goes. Yes, yes. So we're going into an existing van and then from there we're going into an existing spare conduit underneath the road. Do you have a spare? <laughs> no, we only have the one, unfortunately. But previously, I should say, so we, we had done some outreach back almost a couple of years ago um, before we had the design change, and we've met with, um, for, as it relates to specifically Ryan Playground, the folks from Parks, Rob Rotten Buca. Right. So, um, you know, we'll reinvigorate all that stuff and get out and do the stuff that Nicole talked about and make sure we link up with Karen yep. and, and the folks and, at the and Include the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Oh, uh, absolutely. I actually yeah, reached out to Quinlan. I did have a conversation and there. He uh, is ready to work with us as we move forward with the area. Right. Because not only there's a few of butters, but more, more importantly, there's a lot of folks from Charlestown that go through this area. That are very, sure. uh, and, and we use right. platforms like our website where we put weekly construction updates. We get that from our contractor. They give us a three-week look ahead, and yeah. we do door-to-door -door in the community. Um, Sean, who's here with us today, he'll go door-to-door. -door. He'll actually know the folks with the businesses a lot better than we all in this room will probably ever know them. So, so Tom McKay was the ONS rep the last time, so it's been a couple of iterations. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll reconnect on that. On that. May I be the first to congratulate you on your recent promotion? Where Thank you, Eddie. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. I'm still down in Mass Ave. <laughs> so, just want not meaning to labor the point. You said you have one spare conduit in the submarine cable, or uh, so going underneath the underneath the ocean. Uh, underneath, underneath the, the river. river. My yes. understanding is we're we're tying into the one spare that's under. Well, here's my concern or confusion. You're bringing in a major. Cables. Cable system that is going to go into one dock? Yes, no, okay. maybe, so, or? So in addition to the one spare conduit that we're tapping into, there is a utility tunnel that goes underneath in this mm -hmm. river that we're not tying into. So there's there's multiple uh, uh, crossings under the Mystic River. That belongs to you? Yes. Do and you have any space? I am in the serious need of needing a conduit underneath that river. I don't know the answer to that. We'll find could, out. John, could you be ever so yeah. kind to, yeah. when I say I, I this, no, that was a pompous pass for me. We, the city, so, are in need of uh, some relief between yeah. the two sides because uh, because of the casino on the other side, we are trying to uh, right. make sure that uh, it, transportation departments, traffic signals, yeah. and even our street lights, yeah. we need support. I'm not sure what's in there, but we'll take a look at it. We can talk with our engineer. I'm sure it's transmission. We've got 345 comes, I think, through there. That's the line just, that just we reconducted across the common back about three years but ago. Since you have multiple yep. avenues, yep. looking for one three inch. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, see what's there. I don't know. If yep. you can. We'll do. Other questions or comments? Right. Any other talk? We're good. Members of the public? Right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I make a motion to approve the petition by Eversource Energy for a grant allocation to install a new electrical transmission line infrastructure within the following public ways in Charlestown. It is read into the record by the chair and as shown on the set of plans entitled City of Boston, Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Mystic Ave, Main Street, and Alfred Street, Boston, 10 sheets dated January 25th, 2019. Second. Hi, hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, Park. Okay, the next item is on a petition by Selco Partnership doing business as Verizon Wireless on a, for a grant of location with leading company status and no participants uh, to install new telecommunication conduit with city shadow and electrical infrastructure within Fullerton Street, Boston proper, northwest of Brookline Avenue. This was new business on January 17, 2019, and this has shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Verizon Fiber, Boston Mass, Fullerton Street, one sheet dated January 2019. Good morning, Michael Jimo, uh, Robinson and Co. representing Verizon Wireless. A after some uh, communications with Todd this week and some follow-up to your comments at the last hearing, we'd like to request uh, continuance of this until March 28th, which should give us time to look into the manhole issue and the other issues you raised. So you for four PIC meetings? Uh, for four meetings, yes. yes. Thank you. 
is it just for this one or all you? Um, I, well, if you want me to address all of them, I can, no, no, I can no, do no, all just, that. Just, they're, all all getting, continued. they're all getting continued. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, you got it. Thank okay. you, sir. Sure. We, we, no, truly, we appreciate you being responsive to the concerns that are being put forth by this commission and would appreciate if you can uh, give guidance to your staff to uh, encompass those concerns in your future Understood. Understood. Thank you. Uh, questions, comments? No. Come here, Todd. Okay. All right. Members of the public. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion to continue this item until March 28th. I'll make a motion to continue the petition by Selco Partnership item PH14 on the agenda for four weeks to March 28th. Eight weeks. It's eight weeks, four meetings. Uh, sorry. Four meetings, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Four Thank meetings, you. eight weeks. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. The next item is on a petition by Selco Partnership doing business as Verizon Wireless for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install a new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow and electrical infrastructure within the following public ways in Brighton, Western Avenue generally between Mackin Street and Richardson Street, Western Avenue generally at and to the west of Telford Street, Commonwealth Avenue generally between Chestnut Hill Ave and South Street. Uh, this was new business on January 17, 2019, and this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department. Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Verizon Fiber, Boston Mass, Western Ave, Commonwealth Ave, two sheets dated January 2019. Th thank you, Michael Jaimo, representing Verizon Wireless. We would like to continue this until your next uh, meeting, please, uh, right. February 14th. We should be ready to address the concerns at that time. All right. Questions or comments? Give me your time. Members of the public. All right. I'll entertain a motion to uh, continue this item for one meeting until February 14th. Make a motion to continue public hearing 15 until February 14th, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Our next item is on addition by Selco Partnership uh, doing business as Verizon Wireless for a grant of location with lead company status and no participants to install new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow and electrical infrastructure within the following public ways in Roxbury slash Dorchester. Melania Cass Boulevard, generally between St. Junior Truth Court and Shaman Avenue. Tremont Street at St. Alphonsus Street and Southampton Street, generally east of New Market Square. This was new business on January 17th, 2019. And this is as shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Grant of Location Plan, Verizon Fiber, Boston Mass, Melania Cass Boulevard, Tremont Street, two sheets dated January 2019. Thank you, Michael Jammer, representing Verizon Wireless. Uh, we would like to continue uh, until March 28th with this one also, but uh, only the first two bullets noticed here, the Melnea Cass and Tremont Street. The Southampton Street one, uh, after, last, after the new business hearing, it was concluded that that's not Boston right of way, and so we would like to request uh, withdrawal of that. Is that separate mo two separate motions, yeah? Or uh, yeah, I mean, like, it's just not our street, so we don't vote okay. on it. Um, so yeah, that it's the it's the same accident, just with, with you can the Southampton. Southampton's not our street. That, that section, section is Park, Mass, Dot, Park, MTA. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Most of the rest of Southampton is ours. And I, between now and the 28th, and maybe they aren't, necessarily connected, but the Melnia Cass work, given all the work which we have in front of us on Melnia Cass, I assume there will be some conversation or we coordination. We wanted them to coordinate with Pat Hoey to make sure Got that it wasn't going to run under the exactly. proposed ground line. Right, and, and I want to get the engineer in touch with Pat Hoey. Yeah, yeah, your engineer actually spoke with me a few days ago uh, regarding who to talk to when I told Pat if that is coming. Perfect, thank you. Uh, great. Right. Other questions or comments? Amir Todd? Okay. Members of the public? I'll entertain a motion on this item, uh, including continuing the Melania Cass Boulevard and Tremont Street portions until March 28th, and the withdrawal without prejudice the Southampton Street portion of this action. I'll make a motion on uh, the petition by Selco Partnership for the grant location item P16 on the agenda to be uh, continued until March 28th for the first two items, Melania Cass Boulevard and Tremont Street, and for the withdrawal without prejudice for the Southampton Street item. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you very much. Moving on to new business. Uh, new England Avenue, Southern Avenue, Colonial Avenue, Mallard Avenue, Dorchester. Specific repairs on a petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department. Closing our meeting where we ended it was Zach. How we started with Zach. <laughs> good, good to be back, yes. Happy to book on this meeting. Uh, <laughs> oh, the great thing is we continued everything out today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Um, good morning. Uh, I'm Zach Wasmuth, uh, Chief Design Engineer for Public Works Department. Um, we are uh, proposing to reconstruct uh, New England Avenue between Talbot Ave and the uh, Woodrow Norfolk intersection. Um, the sidewalks are either non-existent or in uh, poor condition. Um, this is also coupled with um, the improvements that uh, our Active Transportation Department did with uh, the neighborhood slow streets effort in the Talbot Norfolk Triangle that introduced some. Um, interim improvements, um, some, some bump outs at some of the intersections with flex posts and temporary curb. We also teamed up with um, Water and Sewer Commission uh, as these um, areas where we're bumping out curbs lend themselves to some opportunities for some uh, green infrastructure bioretention areas. Um, so we're implementing all of these uh, traffic calming elements in, in a permanent form as well as these uh, green infrastructure elements and also introducing some sidewalks, particularly in the narrow section between Southern Ave and, uh, and the uh, Woodrow Norfolk intersection where the, where the roadway narrows to allow pedestrian access. As this is in proximity to the um, uh, Fairmount Line, the Talbot Ave uh, station. Uh, we're also in close coordination with the um, Codman Square Neighborhood Development Corporation, who is uh, developing uh, properties immediately adjacent to uh, New England Avenue. Um, and I'll hand it over. I'm joined by uh, Steve Farr and Fred Berry from uh, Niche Engineering. And uh, Steve can kind of walk through some of the particulars of the, of the plan. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Zach. Again, okay, Steve Farr, Niche Engineering. Uh, so this is the Norfolk uh, Woodrow intersection, New England Ave. Uh, the Fairmont line is, is to the north here on the plan, to the west, I would say. This, is the, uh, this section of New England Ave is one way currently. It's, it's currently a variable width pavement. There are no sidewalks, and uh, there's no parking allowed here, but frequently if you go down there, there are cars parked over there all along the, uh, the streets, largely industrial like commercial here um, and residential throughout the rest of this. We're going to maintain this as one way, and we're going to institute curving and sidewalks along the east side of New England Ave uh, and strike this as an 11 foot travel lane and a 5 foot bicycle lane and formally post no parking here as well. Uh, when we get down to the intersection with Southern, we're going to institute bump outs that are currently uh, being shown with the flex posts today, um, formalizing that with curbing, and uh, create a bioretention area in that space that's currently pavement, looking at another bioretention area on the opposite curb line as well, very narrow, very subtle bioretention area to again collect stormwater for the first flush. The crossing will be right in this location here, pedestrian crossing. Steve, uh, um, we may have totally gotten it right with FlexPost the first time, but anything that we learned from the sort of the slow streets intervention with FlexPost that we have adjusted in when we make it actual permanent and concrete and, and curb? Any, any change in design at all? I, I don't think so. I think we're mo modeling which Perfect. are pretty much out there right now with the FlexPost. Okay. But uh, Zach, do to the chief's point, it will be good for us to just circle back with Miss Seskin to ensure that whoever did that design, I think that was tool design. Correct. Okay, because they must have done a post analysis to see whether the effectiveness of the layout of the flex posts Absolutely. are correct. Right. So that we are not we are not naturally assuming that yes. this curb line. So um, it's yes, just we've been working very closely with Stephanie this whole time. But yes, I'm, I'm, absolutely. I just check that. Do we know I'm sorry. What? Uh, we're introduced, yes, yes. Uh, and I believe we're introducing a new one. Yep. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. This was a specific interest here. It's, it's, this is going to be our first neighborhood slow streets that's going yeah, from one, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great, uh, we'll make, it's, we'll it's make that uh, connection. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So as we continue past Southern, again, New England at this direction here, this is going to be a two-way section uh, with 11-foot uh, lanes, no bicycle facility, it's shero condition. The bump, uh, the speed bumps that, uh, Zach and we're talking about there's one right here, um, and there'll be another one, I believe, uh, on the next section. There's a little chicane that is being introduced here again, all this part of the traffic coming, the Vision Zero uh, you know, focus on this area. Uh, sidewalk again on the east side of the roadway. The west side, adjacent to the MBTA right away, is going to be used for uh, high retention areas, stormwater mitigation. These, again, I think are the areas of the, uh, the development that Zach was alluding to in this location and in this location here. And as we cross now at Ave, again, we are instituting more uh, bulb outs, formalization of the 90-degree turning here, uh, with, again, 
little bioretention area there. This portion of New England Ave is developed on both sides of the roadway with, uh, with buildings right up against the sidewalk. So we're replacing the sidewalk and the curbing there, but there'd be no fire retention in that area. And all of this is stop sign control. There's no new signals. Steve, can you go to the very first page yep. where you have the intersection of Southern Am and New England? Yep. So that new crosswalk which you executed by your hand was yes. that new crosswalk right over there? That's a new crosswalk which you are introducing, right? No, I believe there's a crosswalk there now. Okay, so is the location of the crosswalk exactly as it is shown here? Just be sensitive to the fact that you've got a one-way street yep. that can either cars can go straight or make a right turn. The path of pedestrian travel, depending on which side of the street. Sam, do we have sidewalks on both sides? No, yes. Uh, sidewalk on no, just, this just, side. just on There's the no lower side. On side. Yeah. If you're coming from Wood, Wood Row, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there'll just be a sidewalk on the east on that side. side. Yeah, right. Right. only on that okay. side. Yeah. So again, uh, people tend to walk straight. So how are you going to keep people well, this is a, this the big bioretention area right there. there. So we need to start here so that it is yeah. your feet. Yeah, there'll be curb there. Yeah, yeah, so it won't be um, you know, convenient to, to walk. Up. No, we really, yeah, it's designed to direct you to the crosswalk. That's basically it. That's yeah. good. That's good. I have a couple questions. Sure. Um, in the large bioretention area, there is a sewer manhole in the middle of the fire retention area. Yes. Was that inspected? Did you go uh, physically inspect the man? I don't believe so, no. Okay. How do we know, so we're proposing to flood that area with 18 inches of stormwater. So we received that comment. Yeah. And we are going to incorporate the plans that the, the contractor shall excavate. He's going to do a lot of excavation in here anyways. He just has to dig a little bit further to expose the manhole. And we will cover the manhole with, maybe we'll, you know, Whatever you would like. It needs to be watertight. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make sure that moving the forward as we design these, those considerations are taken into account. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I know that you are um, coordinating with elements of Boston Water and Sewer, um, but I want to make sure that like those are very important uh, details. There's also a portion of the street where the water main direct plants directly underneath the curb line. Um, so in the future, we can try to avoid those things. We've approved everything in this drawing thus far, um, but we'll just. It's an iterative process, sure. and we're always learning. To Mike's first point, is there any way for you to do the do some investigatory work before the public hearing to resolve the first point which Mr. Nelson made? Sure. Rather than we, discovering the ramifications during construction, I'm drawing an analogy of traffic signal foundations, which can be a bit of a challenge during construction and find, trying to find the right location because that storm water runoff is going to can be an issue. We can certainly go out there and pop the manhole and look in there. Sort it out, adjust, and make sure that Mr. Nelson's concerns are Make sure it's included in the project. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. The maintenance of them will be the cities, is that right? Um, we have an MOU that we're working out between um, between Waters. Water and Sewer, ourselves, and um, and the Common Square Neighborhood okay. Development. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. One thing we should think about is we do that. And I should know how we, the maintenance plan for what we built at Causeway and Staniford. Uh, but whether we want to think of some common design elements that make things more maintainable or common. You know, sure, but, yeah. But, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, standardization. So, yeah. Other questions or comments? No. Nope. I'm your time. Okay. Members of the public. All right. Uh, See so you guys in two Thanks. weeks. Thank you. All right. Yeah. I will entertain the motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Nice job, Zach. Thank you.